what I want for people and what we're trying to do is show people how to address the root cause of fear so that you don't have fear in any area of your life, whether it's family, so you have an open heart, whether it's sales, whether it's public speaking, we want to rid people of fear because it's what keeps people from joy and fulfillment. Hello there and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky. I'm your host and this is the show that gets you in front of your best audience and keeps you there. And on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming founder and CEO of Permanent Anxiety Solutions, Mr. Daniel Packer. Welcome to the show, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be here, Rick, and you have a very welcoming Australian <laughs> accent. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in the little pre-called chat, I, I, I really uh, committed a cardinal sin. I, I, I accidentally thought, temporarily, <laughs> I was insane. I thought Rick's accent was British, and the second I realized what I had done, I was, I was very apologetic <laughs> because, yeah. you know, if you ever want to... I just know. So for this part, you are Australian. <laughs> you are Australian. Uh, and uh, I'm nothing else. So anyway, it's a pleasure to be here. But also the Australian accent, you have that lighter, more friendlier Australian accent, not the like heavy, the heavy duty strong, one. like oi, oi <laughs> version, which sometimes scares me because no, I think. I'm metro. I'm not regional. Good. <laughs> and anyway, it was a very nice intro and it's a very light uh, intro. And I always, I'm always grateful that I have a job where I get an intro from wonderful voices like yourself. You know, I give talks at conferences, I come on these podcasts, and I get a wonderful little intro. And I wish everybody, every morning, you know, would you have a little intro. You know, you'd wake up. If everybody could wake up every morning where Rick's voice, I won't do your voice, but was like, you know, you know, wel welcoming to the world this morning yeah. is you. You are incredible. You not only inhale, but exhale. Give it up. Gold stars for you. I don't know. Everyone should get an intro from you, Rick. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. So anybody who's interested in joining me on the show, remember that. Now, you and I, Daniel, we're going to be talking about anxiety and how your organization has engineered a solution that's helped thousands of people overcome this often debilitating disorder. Now, prior to the call, Daniel, you and I spoke about uh, where you're located. So just for the, uh, I guess, for context, where are you calling in from? Well, right now I am in Mexico, oh. um, but uh, I, I grew up in California, Berkeley, California, but I left the U.S. about 10 years ago. And I'll tell you kind of my full story later, but basically what happened was I had anxiety. And when we figured out how to be free of it, I was very emotionally free. But then sort of unknowingly, it led to logistical geographical freedom. I, I, I have two bags. Everything I own fits into two bags. And every year I go live in a new country and I'm free. And so I think deep down, everybody wants to be free. And we figured out a system that not only allows people to be emotionally free, but logistically free. Uh, I just spent the uh, winter in Sweden snowboarding and I'm spoiled. I got to tell you about this thing. This is this this is, this is either going to irritate or inspire your audience. So um, normally, if you go skiing or snowboarding in a town, uh, you go to a place uh, and you might have to take a bus for a half an hour or an hour to like get there. Unless you're in the hotel that's right there. Usually yeah. you got to travel. But there's this town in Sweden called Ore, which that was my Swedish accent. Um, <laughs> and it, they have this thing called Ski In, Ski Out. And what that means is the ski runs go right to your apartment. I lived there for three months and the ski run went by my door. Oh, so wow. I, I would coach people in the morning. I would put on my little outfit and I would walk out my door and I, boom, I'm snowboarding. I would go for two hours, have a little session. Then when I was done, I would just zhush, right? That's the Latin word, zhush, zhush yes. right up to my doorway and clip. I was like James Bond. It was so <laughs> incredible. I felt like a billionaire and to go shopping, I would put on a backpack and I snowboarded to the supermarket. Oh, how, how cool is cool. that? I was like Jason Bourne. Yeah. So now I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled. <laughs> now when people are like, oh, we have to take a bus. I was like, oh, what are you raised by wolves? You, ski and ski out, baby. It's where it's at. So anyway, I was in uh, Sweden snowboarding. Then I went to Estonia for the uh, summer yep. to learn kiteboarding. And now then I went to England accidentally should not go there during uh, when it's rainy. And anyway, so now I'm here in Mexico. Well, there That's you go. My story. Thank you very much for sharing now. I know that you have some pretty interesting hobbies that you get involved with, and I'm really interested. I saw a video of you with doing your dance moves. Tell us a little bit about that part of your life. 
Well, it's, it's, it's not a thanks for appreciating the dance news. By the way, if you want to know what Rick is talking about, if you go to my website in the about section, there's a video of me entering a dance competition. And honestly, I don't know where I learned to dance. It's, it's some past life regression. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. But nobody that looks like me has any reason <laughs> dancing as well as I do. I wasn't trained. I didn't learn. What The music kicks in, and James Light Brown just comes out of nowhere, and it confuses people because they're like, how does someone that looks like that move like that? Uh, you got and the it's moves. Just, it, it's a superpower, man. It really is. It, it even, I've seen video of me dancing and I'm like, what the, heck? where is that Who coming is that? from? So yeah, <laughs> that's it's my pretty avatar. cool. Wow. That's crazy. I love it. You know, and it's a freedom of expression. And how does it make you feel when you dance? It's good. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. And also, I mean, expressing yourself, we're all here to express ourselves, but one of the benefits of the system we developed is it, it, it really, allows you it's not just about anxiety it's it really heals almost all forms of of debilitating fear so fear of what people think fear of failure fear of rejection i used to be crippled by those things i used to care what people think i was constantly afraid of if people didn't like me and the system that we develop because it goes to the root cause i'm i'm basically free of that so yeah, not right. only am i dancing and expressing myself but i truly in all areas of my life i don't give a flying fudge what anybody thinks of me and not an arrogant way. It just, it's been like healed out of me. And so to your listeners, you know, your business leaders, your entrepreneurs, you know, they, everybody knows that fear, fear of rejection, fear of failure, overwhelm, worry, worry, what people think, worry, failure, anxiety, all that fear, even if they can overcome it or push through it, a lot of business people and leaders with just brute force and experience can push through it. But it keeps them from enjoying what they do more. Mm. They're not as they're not able to be as authentic. So they don't always communicate at the highest level. They're not always they don't always enjoy life as much. So we work with a lot of executives, business leaders, and entrepreneurs, people that are successful, but they're aware that that fear, the worry, the anxiety that's looming, it just keeps them from performing at a higher level, but also from enjoying what they do even more. And so if you're listening to this. What I'm going to teach you is not just, it's not just anxiety. You may say, I don't have anxiety. Fine. But if you have anything that you'd call fear, worry, worrying what people think or worry in certain social situations or certain speaking situations, if you would like to just be free of that permanently so that you can just enjoy life more, run your business better, be a better leader, be a better parent, be a better spouse. If that sounds good to you, that's why I want to share it with you. And we work with a lot of leaders and business people because our whole thing is results, permanent results, not band-aids and management and tips and tools, a system that's scientifically proven with measurable results where you are free of it. And that's just more efficient and it's a better business model. Well, you definitely have a message that's crying to get out and we are definitely going to explore that. But prior to going into the core of the call, Dan, you tell us a little bit about your experience as a stand-up comedian. Again, another freedom of expression point. You know, a lot of people fear public speaking. How did you embrace it? I didn't embrace it, man. I mean, it, it was terrifying, but yeah, yeah. you know, um, I mean, it, it, I, it's a, it's a complex question because it's almost, I wish I had these tools back when I started, uh, I started yes. when I was around 20 and I did it. I overcame, I didn't overcome it. It was through brute force and repetition and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times on stage. But here's the thing. I never got to the root cause of it through repetition and experience. I was able to be relatively relaxed on stage so that nobody could tell, but I never got to the root cause. What does that mean? I could be in front of a thousand people, tell my jokes, be chill as a cucumber. But when I got off stage and I wanted to talk to a pretty girl, I would turn into Forrest Gump and just be like, my name is Daniel. You smell (laughs) like vanilla. I'd get really insecure because the core fear was still there. I had just found a workaround in a comfort zone. So a lot of your listeners probably have found workarounds or just through it repetition have gotten good at giving talks or better at sales, but there's probably other areas where they still have a fear that's holding them back. So I, what I want for people and what we're trying to do is show people how to address the root cause of fear so that you don't have fear in any area of your life, whether it's 
family, so you have an open heart, whether it's sales, whether it's public speaking, we want to rid people of fear because it's what keeps people from joy and fulfillment. Absolutely. That's great feedback. Now, I know that uh, you have favorite foods. Tell me a little bit about your experience with peach gelato. Yeah. Am I hitting the spot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. P P peach gelato <laughs> is God's way of saying sorry about all the other stuff. I think it's <laughs> That's what I think. I think it's an apology. It's so delicious. Um, th of all the countries that I've been, I've been, I've, I've been to about 50 countries. I've lived in about 15. And the one of two countries I would go back to is Italy. And part of it is because there's a, there's a town, there's a couple towns where eating peach gelato in the Italian summer oh, in the square, unbelievable. it's divine. It yeah. is just time stops. And nothing else matters. Peach and you, gelato. And so you God, if you're up there listening, <laughs> I love what you're doing. I Give like sunsets. I like the smell of baby hair and <laughs> peach gelato. Good Absolutely. job, God. Good job. Gold Absolutely. stars. Now tell me, when you do go out, do you enjoy socializing with friends? And what's your favorite meal? Oof. Favorite meal. Very difficult one. Mm -hmm. There's lots of them. There is. Well, this is the one I do when I'm uh, when when I'm really want to celebrate myself. There's something called bula base, which is basically like a seafood tomato based sauce stew with oh, like the lobster claw and yeah. the scallops. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. That sounds wonderful. You're making me hungry. <laughs> now, when you do um, get some downtime, which I, I I doubt that there's too much of it, but if you do, do you enjoy a movie? Are you into that sort of thing? Man. You know, it sounds like a cliche, but that cliche that when you love what you do, it's not work. It's not work. I'm sure you're, you know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, this will just sound like a cliche, but it's true. I, I, we're all here to help. Yep. And we develop something that just gives people their lives back to fulfill. And it, what we, the beauty of what we do is it's so effective. It just works. Yep. And we're all here to help. And so on a daily basis, I mean, just this morning, um, we, you know, when we work with people, we're tracking their results because to us results matters. And when you, when we work with people, we don't, um, we're very passionate about results. And when we work with people, we don't take your money at the beginning because we haven't helped you yet. Of we course. really believe in results yep. and we only want to get paid for results. So, and we know we get results because as you go through our program, we're tracking numerically, uh, with data, your fear and anxiety, and it's going down. And we can track it because, you know, you're reporting every day. And so a gentleman, Jonathan from Washington, D.C., uh, this was six weeks ago. He came to us, panic attacks, anxiety, fear of public speaking, you name it, you had it. Also, he just he, he didn't he couldn't be with his kids because he was always hiding. And he, so he felt guilt and shame. And and he had tried everything, Rick. He had just tried everything and he had lost hope. But he had met somebody at a party who had worked with us, who had similar symptoms. And when he came six weeks ago and we spoke, he was just so broken and he felt so bad because he wasn't there for his son. And it's five, this was yesterday, we got his, his data in and his, his panic attacks were just gone, yep. but his anxiety is down by 85%. And I just got off the phone with him and he's just, it's so meaningful. He's not only, he said, Daniel, I haven't felt like this. I haven't felt calm in my entire life. I feel calm. My energy's back. He said, but more importantly, I'm hanging out with my kids again. Yes. You gave me my family back and my kids have their dad back. I mean, can you, like can, <laughs> he got me in the fields. So when you're able to give that, that's what, that's what gets fulfills. me up in the morning yep. and energizes me. And yeah, at the end of the day, I reward myself with a little, with a little Netflix, Netflix it, and chill. Occasionally. But sure. You know, at the end of the day, what, what, what I've taken from your feedback there Again, you're very passionate about what you're doing, and I love it. Um, it. It seems to me that people who are maybe masking uh, these these fears, anxieties, call them what you will, would maybe use um, movies more often than maybe they should, or social media maybe more than they should, to mask and escape. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. It's a very good in insight, and it's you know I think here's the thing about fear and anxiety. And I kind of lop them all together. Some people call it fear, worry, concern, overwhelm, fear of rejection, lack of, it, it, they give it different names, yeah. but I truly believe, and this was my experience, the fear that people are experiencing. Yeah. And I've learned this is, 
it's painful and pain is almost always there to teach you a lesson. It's often the universe or God's way of saying, Hey, you're not listening and I'm sending pain to get your attention because we don't naturally want to grow as people. It's uncomfortable changing mm -hmm. and God knows this. And so God will turn up the pain and take away stuff to motivate you to grow. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Rick? It makes sense to me, you know, and I wonder also, when we're growing up, we're often around people who are ins inspirational for us. And they, I guess they set the foundation for the individuals that we grow into. Now, I know that your father had a lot to do with that in your case. Tell us a little bit, a little bit about your journey with him. Well, again, what we've done is, and I just like to be clear because it's not the typical thing that's out there, what no, we've no. developed. And I repeat it over and over again so that people know it's available because it's, it's what we're doing is innovative and rare. And what we've done is a system that gets permanent results and that's not manage no. it's gone and it doesn't come back. And, and, and that's not typically what's sold. What's sold is tips and tools and techniques to manage fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And your audience knows a ton about that switching mindset, breathing exercises, meditations, books, videos, apps, it manages it. And there's a place for management, but we're solving it and me with measurable results. And it was not easy. And the reason we did it, was because when I was growing up, uh, my dad was a scientist and an inventor. And he, my dad wasn't one, my dad wasn't one of those, I'm proud of you, I love you, mm -hmm. attaboys. I didn't get a I lot get of, that. I didn't get any attaboys. I'm sure I'm the only kid whose father didn't give him the, no, I'm no, proud of you. I'm the no, only you're one. Not. No, you're not. <laughs> what, I'm, Rick, am yeah, I not yeah. alone? Tell no, me. You're absolutely not alone. No, there's, there's, there's different types of fathers out there. That's for sure and certain. Yeah. I mean, we, I, of course I can look back and have compassion for him and I understand it, but I remember, you know, just no matter what I did, I couldn't get it. So I remember I, I actually devised a plan to get him to say, I'm proud of you. I thought I would do something that I knew he'd be proud of. My dad was very into college applications. And so I ran for class president knowing that would look good on a college application. So I run for class president thinking I'll go home, tell my dad I'm class president. He'll say good job. I'll know he loves me and a discussion. So I run for class president and I win and I'm walking home and I'm all excited. I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to tell my dad, he's going to say good job. I'm going to know he <laughs> loves me. And I walk in and I see him there and totally oblivious to what I'm about to walk into. I said, Hey dad, guess who's class president. And he says, don't let it interfere with your homework. <laughs> and I, and I was like, dude, that was so easy. All you had to say was a good job. So I start crying because yeah, yeah. I'm still, I'm, and I, I'm weeping because I'm feeling the pain of this mm. rejection. And I, I start crying and I, I plead with them. It was like one last time. And I, I looked at him just crying and I said, what, what, like, what, why can't you tell me you're proud of me? And he said, it's not my job to tell you when I'm proud of you. It's my job to tell you when you mess up. Oh, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Wow. What a perspective. <laughs> And I was like, I don't think that's, that's helpful, not, but that's B, not. that'll leave a mark. So anyway, again, I know now my dad with compassion, but still it, 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 it left a mark. And, but what my dad did give me was sort of two guiding principles that have to do with the work that we're doing now. The first is my dad was a, a physicist, but he always, he also invented things. He had a boat and he would buy a boat and he would go in and he, if he saw something that wasn't working, he would like make his own in his workshop. Or if he went to a store and what they were selling wasn't that great, he would just make his own. Make his own. And I thought this was just an incredible superpower. He's like an Avenger. He just made something. And my dad <laughs> said to me, he said, you know, Daniel, if something in the world isn't working, invent something, invent something better. And he also said something to me. He said, you know, a lot of people claim to know what they're talking about. There's a lot of theories and ideas and concepts. He said, but you know what? You know who, who you want to listen to? The person that gets the results. Uh -huh. He says, results matter. Not ideas, not concepts. Results is what makes the world a better place. And that idea of results stuck with me. And so... As a kid, I, I wanted to become an inventor and make things that got results because it, it makes an impact in the world. And I went to engineering school yep. and I got properly trained at UC Berkeley how to look at a complex problem, how to break it down into a simple mechanical understanding. You then build a prototype 
And then you start testing it and getting data and results yep. and then improving it until the thing you built finally works the way you want and gets results. And it's very satisfying. But also that's how you get results is you get theory, prototype, test, optimize results. And I got really good at it. The problem was it didn't teach me how to make relationships work. I was ill-equipped. I don't know if they taught it in quantum theory and I missed it. I don't know, but I came out of engineering school and I fell in love with a woman and we loved each other. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm probably the only one. Uh, we did not live happily ever after. And I, I made a mistake. I uh, the relationship turned very unhealthy very quickly. And I later found out I was basically being emotionally and verbally abused, but I was too insecure to leave. Oh. And so I stayed and I know I'm the only one to stay in a relationship too long, but I stayed. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Rick? No, you are definitely not. <laughs> You're not Robinson Crusoe, as they say. Good. <laughs> so I made the mistake. A lot of people made, I stayed in too long. And when it was over two weeks after it was over, I was just talking to a friend and they interrupted me just like a normal interruption something small. And my body got filled with terror. Oh. I just, I was terrified. And I thought, oh, this is not a good sign. No. And then two weeks later, I was supposed to meet a friend at a coffee shop and they were running five minutes late. And all of a sudden I felt like I was going to die with fear. And I didn't know what the heck was going on. I, I went to a therapist. They told me I had severe anxiety and complex PTSD complications of staying in that relationship too long. So like your audience, that has a symptom like this, fear, anxiety, panic attacks, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. I went looking for help and I went to therapists. I went to psychologists, spiritual teachers. I, I, I lived in an ashram. I tried EMDR and EFT and CBT and CGT and MOUSE. I tried all the letters. All the ABCs. All the letters. I went to all the experts with letters after their names. And what I wanted, which is what your audience wants, is, is to be free of this fear and anxiety, but I didn't get that, man. I just got management, but I, and, and I felt trapped because I wasn't living the life I wanted to live, but because the experts couldn't help me, I felt broken. I felt trapped. I felt, and I started to give up hope and I was in a lot of pain and I, I wouldn't have taken my own life, but I got why people do. I really do because when you can't, when you go for help and you can't get help, you feel hopeless and you start to lose hope. And so I had this like rock bottom moment. I was in my apartment, terrified and hopeless. And I just looked up to the universe and God. And I just said like, what, what do you want from me? Like, mm -hmm. I, get, I get this as a test, but I just spent 10 years and a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm still, what do you want from me? Yeah. Tell me and I'll do it. And in this sort of moment of surrender and pain, I, I hear kind of the words that my dad told me, which is if something's not working, make something better and results matter. results matter. And I looked at this industry, this industry of therapists and psychologists and coaches and spiritual teachers. And I saw that it's a lot of well-meaning people, but they're not getting, they're not solving anything. They're not getting great results you, you and it's expensive and it takes years. And I was like, I can do, maybe we can do better. Maybe we can do better. I, I have a question if I may interject. I, yeah. I often think about the variable nature of our existence as human beings. We go from one state on a spectrum to another. Um, you talk about solution as if it's absolute. Now, anxiety being, um, you know, related to fear and all these other aspects, isn't that a variable? Is it possible to completely get rid of anxiety? Well, Here's the interesting, so short answer, 100%. Yeah, excellent. How do I know? I was in the fetal position and I couldn't leave the house. And now I have been chill as a cucumber for 10 years straight. That's awesome. That's... Now, what I feel is, and, and, and this is the confusion, you can feel stress. Stress is a normal response to challenge your unknowns. Stress which means like two out of 10 to three out of 10. Right. And you feel it in the moment of the thing. So what does that mean? Let's say you're running late to catch an airplane. You may feel some stress on the way to the airport, like two out of 10, three out of 10, but then you get on the plane 
and you should calm down. So stress is normal. I can feel some stress when challenged or there's unknown. That's the natural healthy stress response. That is unavoidable. That's healthy. That's normal. However, people aren't just feeling two out of 10 for five minutes. People are feeling three out of tens for four days. People are feeling seven out of tens for nine hours, nine years. That is anxiety. Yeah. That is not healthy. And it's a hundred percent solvable. How do I know? I, mine is completely gone. Our clients is, that's how, that's when we get paid when yeah, it's yeah. gone and it doesn't come back. So how do I know we have the data and yeah. we have a business model based on that? But your question, Rick, because the experts are just focused on symptoms yeah. and the experts don't know how to solve this. Most of the world has anxiety. And so it feels like, doesn't everybody have it? Yes, everybody has it. Just like a lot of people used to have polio, not because you have to have polio because they didn't know how to solve it. <laughs> yes. So it feels like everybody needs to have it. And when people come to us and we tell them we're solving it, they're very skeptical. They're like, I've been anxious my whole life. And I say, I know, I get it. They'll say, you can solve this in six weeks. I'm like, I get it. They say, there's no way you can do that. And I said, look, it's zero risk to try this. It's a system. If it doesn't work, you don't pay. When it does work, you get your life back. And we, we have that promise, one, because it's the right thing to do, but two, because when we tell people you can solve this and be free of it, people don't believe us because what we're doing is innovative. And so to help get people help, we've made it zero risk to try. So that's a long answer. The point is it feels like everybody's got anxiety, mm. but it's because the experts don't know how to solve it. But myself and our clients are completely free of it. And that's incredible, if I, that's, do, if I may say so myself. That's a beautiful thing. If you can uh, make a difference in the world and get those results, that's what we're all looking for. Now I'm wondering, um, now you've got me thinking, well, you talk about a system, but what, what does this system entail? Is it mind, body, spirit? Is it diet? Is it exercise? What is it? Well, let me, ex I'm going to, it's a good, it's a good question. And of course, it's what you want to know. As a what 30 I think foot, is most valuable. Overview. What'd you say? As a 30 foot, you know, overview of it, not, not into the weeds with detail. No, I understand. I think what I think is most valuable for your audience, you know, even if I tell them, here's what you do, or here's how it is, what we have found is because people have gone to the experts and the experts have an incomplete understanding, mm. people have tried to solve their fear and of anxiety for a very long time and they haven't. And because of that, they're left feeling very confused. They blame themselves feeling like they're broken or there's something wrong with them. Their whole mindset around this problem makes them give up hope and they think it's complicated. So what I'd rather share with you is an understanding of fear and anxiety okay. yep. that helps your audience understand two things. One is this isn't your fault and that this is solvable because Otherwise, people just think it's too good to be true. Now, the reason it's solvable, is there's a whole bunch of reasons. The first off is the system. And I'll get more in the system later. But it's the system that gets the results, not the theory. The theory we figured out with me. I was one of the first test cases. We figured it out, and I felt free. And then my team said, oh, look, we did it. I said, no, 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 yeah, but we need to do this better. We need something consistent, reliable, affordable, and trackable. And what we need is a system because people have doubt, they have fear, they think there's something wrong with them. They're in, so a system is beautiful because you can test a system. Yeah. That's what engineering school taught me. You build a system and then you test it. So we have sent thousands of people through the system and we see where is it working, where do we improve it, and we get data and we optimize the system. But also the system creates a set of tools and a structure. That's what does the heavy lifting. So that for people that are feeling a lot of doubt and confusion, everything is laid out for you. You just work the steps and you get the results. It's like an inner gym. If you just show up to the gym and do exercises for 30 minutes a day, you can be free of this. So it's the system that's the super sauce. And that took a lot of years of testing, but it's the system. So that's the first thing. And I say that because most of your clients have gone to coaches or therapists or psychologists and they've gotten individual tips and tools. Yeah. Individual tips and tools are not enough to get the job done. If you, if you took your car to a mechanic and he just handed you a wrench and said, hey, here's a wrench. Is that enough to rebuild an engine, just, just a wrench? No. No, why not? 
because there's missing parts. Yeah. <laughs> you need other components. You, you need, you, exactly. You need multiple pieces, multiple tools, and multiple things that are engineered to address the root cause and get the job done. And most people, they get a, they do a mindset a, a, a meditation or they have a breathing exercise or one therapist teaches them CBT and they're jumping around doing individual things. What they need is a holistic system that works together to address the root cause and get the job done. So if you're listening to this, the reason you failed is because you spent a lot of money getting just indiv- like a wrench, a screwdriver from this person, you know, a spark plug. You never got a complete system of tools that was designed to address the root cause. So this isn't your fault. It was the fault of the people. And you spent a lot of money on individual tools when you needed a system. But the other, and I'm going to say more, but does that make sense, Rick? Oh, look, it's absolutely wonderful. Keep going. I'm, I'm loving this call. Yeah. So, but the reason a system is possible is because, again, our approach, our goal was to solve this. The average therapist, psychologist, doctor, spiritual teacher, they're not trying to solve this. They go to school, they learn some insights or tips or tools to manage, and they pass them on to you, and you go, thank you, and they make some money. They're fine managing things. Now, it's not bad or wrong, but I'm an engineer, baby. Results matter. I don't want to manage something. It's like going, would you go to a mechanic and say, hey, can you manage my flat tire? Can you manage, you know... (laughs) No, solve it. So we wanted to solve it. And so that's all we focused on. So our whole approach was to solve it. To do that, we realized spirituality and psychology, which is the primary approach for fear and anxiety, is helpful. It's insightful. It's valuable. But it's not designed to solve things. Spirituality and psychology gives you insights. It gives you understandings, ways of looking at a problem. And there's value in that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But can you see that a theory of what's going on with you isn't enough, may not be enough to solve it? If you take your car to a mechanic and your mechanic says, hey, your car has a power issue. It's like, okay, that's a a way of understanding, but it doesn't solve anything. It's just an insight. So think of it this way. Let's say you go um, out to eat and you start to choke and two people walk up to you and one person walks up to you and says, hey, let's explore what's going on with you. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that maybe when you were younger, there was a lot of uh, fear around the dinner table and maybe maybe you ate your food too quickly. Also, um, I think you have a real scarcity mindset around air. I think you're really focused on the air that you don't have (laughs) instead of the abundance of air that you do have. And I feel like. I feel like you're really attached to breathing, you know, and that attachment, your ego and your story that you want to breathe is stressing you out and making it worse. So if you could just let go, like let go, you'd be fine. Or somebody walks up and says, here's the deal. You have an air pipe and it is mechanically blocked with some food. I'm going to add mechanical pressure to your stomach. That will put air behind the blockage. It will hopefully pop it out so that air can then mechanically get into your lungs and you will live. That's In I'm that making. moment, do you want an understanding that is spiritual, psychological, or mechanical? I need mechanical, so you've got to know what's a good fit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but well. all- Why else would you want, if you want to solve something, why else is a mechanical understanding preferable? So we, we live in a, we live in a world of band-aids, don't we? That's essentially what I'm taking from this. People are willing to help you from a professional standpoint. These are highly qualified individuals who have been taught to deal band-aids. Well, they're not only taught to do band-aids, but they disguise the band-aids as valuable. That's the trick. Now, I don't think they have negative intent, and I don't want to call it a scam, but it's a very out of integrity thing that they're doing. Like when I went to go, you know, when I had my crippling anxiety, you know, they said to me, "Um, you're dealing, you know, with complex PTSD as a result of the relationship. And I was like, oh, thank you. I was so grateful. Looking back, that's not helpful. No. That would be like someone walking into the ER and being like, hmm. You seem to be bleeding. Yeah. Oh, great. That's not helpful. I already knew that. Yeah. It's the solution that is valuable. And we people spend a lot of money on the diagnosis and the understanding and the 
insights. People don't want insights. They want results. And results is possible when you have a mechanical understanding. A mechanical understanding means this is connected to this, or this isn't working because of this. And if we move this here, this will realign here. It just works. If you break your leg, you don't have to live with a broken leg for the rest of your life. They put a cast on your leg. There's a mechanical mechanism that heals the leg and you're up and running. It's mechanics. Yeah. So a mechanical approach means that there is, we developed a solution and it makes it really simple. And that's what people need is something simple. So I want to, now when people say this, they go, Daniel. Yeah, simple sounds great, but that's impossible because anxiety and fear feels complicated. It mm. feels complicated because when you've had something a really long time and you've tried different things and there's different, it feels complicated. But I want to give you an experience so you can understand why your fear and anxiety is simple. Because if you can see that it's simple, you'll understand, A, it's not your fault that you're confused, but B, it'll give you hope that this is solvable. So can I show you that this actually is solvable and Absolutely. simple? Absolutely. Yep. We're here to add value. Okay. And also, when you realize that it's mechanical, you'll realize that a system is much more likely to work. So we're going to do a little interactive role play, okay? Yep. Non-sexual. No offense, Rick. Just uh, it's not appropriate <laughs> for right now. No, no. <laughs> and what it's going to show you in your audience is that on some level, fear and anxiety isn't complicated, that it's mechanical and thus maybe simple, okay? Let's go. Okay, so here's inner mechanics lesson number one. Number one is what you're experiencing, whether you call it fear, worry, overwhelm, anxiety, uh, it's a symptom. It's not a disorder. It's not a problem. It's a symptom. And it's a symptom of what is actually causing this which is that deep down underneath it all, you feel unsafe. Can you see, Rick, I want you to think of certain, and I want your audience to think of these things, these symptoms they have, whether you call it fear of rejection, fear of wor worry, uh, overwhelm, anxiety, loneliness, whatever. Can you, even the spinning mind, worrying, constantly yeah, worrying, busy mind. can you see underneath all that, that it's almost like you just don't feel safe within yourself and, and everything else is a symptom of that. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. I think, in, innately wants to feel safe, don't they? Of course. Mm. But we don't. And if you don't feel safe, mechanically, you will feel fear. Once you feel fear, you'll then name that fear. You may call it fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of success, uh, care afraid to let people down, fear of disappointment. You could call it overwhelm, anxiety, panic attacks. You may call that fear different names. But if you really look at it, and we saw this in the data, every single person that had one of these symptoms deep down, they didn't feel unsafe from within. So inner mechanics lesson number one is you don't have anxiety. You don't suffer from anxiety. That thing outside didn't make you anxious, make you afraid. It's that deep down from within we don't feel safe. So that's inner mechanics lesson number one. Okay. Yep. Now the next question is why do we feel unsafe and how do we solve it? So I'm going to show you that feeling unsafe has a simple cause and a simple solution. Okay. Yep. Now, again, this is an oversimplification of something that's a little bit more complex, but of it'll course. give you an experience. Yeah. Okay. So in the, in this role play, we're going to be friends. And when I talk to you, Rick, I'm also talking to your audience. So when I say the word you, I'm, I'm talking to you, Rick, and your audience. Okay. So let's say that we're friends and we've been friends for a while, but then all of a sudden, for reasons which you don't understand, I start to treat you like crap and I'm not nice to you and I don't care about you. And when you need me, I'm not, I'm not there for you. I don't consider you. I know what you don't like. I do it anyway. I put everybody else ahead of you and you're dead last. And when you need me, I abandon you and you can't trust or rely on me. If I treat you that way for a while, will that leave you feeling unsafe and anxious or safe and calm? It's cut two parts. Um, you sound like a narcissist and I would feel unsafe. Yeah, 
I mean, what I'll sound like and all this stuff, but you will feel unsafe. Yes, sir. And can you see, it's like simple. It's almost like a reflex. If I treat you that way, you're going to feel that way. Of course. Cause That's effect. inner mechanics. Okay. So now let's say, I want you to say, you and your audience, I want, on the count of three, I want you to tell me. I want you to say, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. Okay. On the count of three, say, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. One, two, three. The way you're treating me makes me feel unsafe. Why are you telling me this? What is wrong with you? You're, everything's fine. Your life is great. Why are you freaking out? There's something wrong with you. Seriously, mm. there's something wrong with you. And also, don't bring that to me. I'm trying to enjoy life, and you are interrupting my happiness with this drama. So take whatever this fear is, keep it away from me. I don't care. You're on your own. Does that leave you feeling safe and calm or unsafe and more anxious? Deflated, unsafe, and more anxious. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry to do this to you. It's for the sake of science. I would never treat you this way. But can you see that, again, it's almost oh, yeah. mechanical? Yes. How sir. it would, yeah. It's very powerful. Can be very what powerful. Is? You know, this uh, down treading of people, you know, being in that sort of situation. I know this personally, but I'm not going to go yeah. into that. You, we you, know you, that there are things on that some we're... certain emotions from a personal perspective that, uh, I'd locked away. So this is very interesting. Good. And I know this can be painful and it brings up a lot of layers and this, this is a complex topic, but still what I'm trying to share with you is certain things will mechanically leave a person feeling unsafe. It is inner mechanics. It's always going to happen. But the thing about mechanics is if you really understand the mechanics of something and you can move it in one direction with the same knowledge, you can move it in the other direction. For instance, if you know the mechanics of losing weight, which is to burn more calories than you eat, you also know how to gain weight. With the same knowledge, you just eat more calories than you burn. So if I know what mechanically makes you feel unsafe, we then mechanically know what makes a person feel safe. So now on the count of three, same thing. Say to me, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. Okay? One, two, three. The way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. I am so sorry. Thank you for telling me. I, oh my God, I feel horrible. The way you feel makes so much sense, given how I've treated you. There's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with me. And I'm, I'm glad you told me because it lets me know I need to treat you better. I've broken your trust and I'm just sorry it's gotten to this. And I want to be a better friend to you. I want to rebuild your trust. That'll take time. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you for telling me. I know that wasn't easy and I'm really sorry. Does that leave you feeling unsafe and anxious or does that leave you feeling safe and calm safe and calm yep can i ask you a question at this this juncture very quickly uh, sure. uh, i know that this is just a role play but does does uh, friend selection <laughs> make a difference meaning the people you hang around because clearly it sounds like it could <laughs> well the short answer is yes but what i'm trying to show is there's a lot of what our data showed and the research showed is that there are mechanical things that will happen that accumulate over time and will leave any person feeling unsafe. Uh, it's yes. mechanics. Yes, God. And it's not a mystery. It's mechanics. It's to every, if you don't drink enough water, you'll have symptoms. If you don't brush and floss, you'll have symptoms. If you don't eat a healthy diet, you'll have symptoms. And there are certain things that we're exposed to that will leave us feeling unsafe mechanically. And that's what people are feeling is this unsafety. But in this role play, I'm being a bad friend to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're around someone that's a bad friend to you or not loving to you, you will feel unsafe. It's just mechanics. And it's compounding, but on some isn't level, it? We're, on some level, we're in a f relationship with ourselves. And can you see that sometimes we're not always a very loving, good friend to ourselves? Huh. All the time. I'm very critical of self. Wanting more than yep. what I can deliver. And yet you can't yep. see it because you're so close to the mirror. If you were about to step away a fraction, maybe you'd see something say like my wife does. She sees much in me that I don't. So I, don't, I know I digress. But. Yes. Your audience has done enough work on themselves that they're aware that there are things that they're doing that is not, it's not ideal. And they know that. But what people didn't know and what our research showed was 10 to 30 times a day, 
There are things coming from both the outside world, but also from you to you that have been accumulating for years. And those little tiny things have been building, building, building and leaving your, your, you feeling mechanically unsafe from within. Then when the outside world pushes on you and challenges you, instead of just feeling stress, because you don't feel safe on the inside, you feel it much stronger and you call that anxiety, you call that panic, you call that worry, you call that overwhelm. And I'm here to tell you, no, there are little things that are going on every day right under your nose from the outside world to the inside world that's leaving you feeling mechanically unsafe and you're feeling the symptoms of that. Now, the downside is nobody knows it's going on. And it's leaving people feeling unsafe. But it's a simple explanation of what's going on. So the downside is this is going on and it's leaving people feeling mechanically unsafe. But Rick, can you see that if we want to turn this around quickly in a way that's simple, can you understand why a simple understanding of the problem is good news? A simplified response is absolutely great news. Why? If you, if you can solve it with as uh, many steps as in three versus 53 and give me a proper uh, diagnosis, prognosis and result, I'm going to come to you. Exactly. It just makes the whole thing simpler and more easy to solve. If it's mechanical, it means we know what to do and when. We have absolute data that things in the body can malfunction. You know, if you break a leg, it can be repaired. If you need a root canal, it can be repaired. If you have heart blockage, it can be repaired. Our body is mechanics, and yeah. mechanics can fail, and we end up with symptoms, but they can be repaired. You don't have to live like this. Nobody walks around saying, I broke a leg when I was five, and I still have a broken leg, but I go to a therapist every month, and they, I learn more <laughs> about crazy. my broken leg. No, no. no, they just solve it. Nobody walks around saying, I, I, had, I need a root canal, but I'm going to a therapist to really explore my teeth. No, you go in, it's mechanics. <laughs> it's all fixable and solvable with a system. So... It, I hope your audience can hear. First of oh, all, this no. isn't your, your yeah. fault. The people that you went to didn't address the root cause. They, they can made this very confusing, which I think allows them to make more money because when you're confused, you never get to the bottom of the things and they can wait, make way more money. But this is why people still have this fear and why they're confused because the experts confuse them and we're making things simple and solvable. And the beauty of this is when people do our program, at the end, they feel safe from the inside out. This isn't even about anxiety, Rick. Mm. This is about, think how good of an entrepreneur you would be or a leader and how much better life would be and how much more you would enjoy your business and being out in the world. What a better person you would be. How much better, Rick, and to your audience, would life be if you woke up every morning feeling safe and solid from within? How much better would life be? No, oh, 100%. Confidence would go through the roof. You'd see yourself differently. You'd lift your body a different way. You'd, you'd treat others differently. All these knock-on effects, I, I assume. Can you see how that would make you a better business owner and entrepreneur? Of course. Yep. There are, it's we a work with a lot of business owners. What'd you say? It's a trajectory. You're either going one way or the other. That is absolutely true. We work with a lot of high performers, very successful people that just through talent and hard work get to a pretty high level. But if you feel unsafe from within, you're going to have these symptoms, worried about this, worried about that, afraid of this, afraid of that. You'll still be do really well, but you'll plateau. You'll plateau and usually you'll, you won't be as fulfilled and joyful and you'll plateau because of that feeling of unsafety from within. We see it. It shows up in sabotage, procrastination. If you feel unsafe, it's going to slow you and you're going to plateau. So high performers, high earners, entrepreneurs who are already successful come to us. And when they feel safe, this happened, uh, what was it? It was like four and a half months ago. A guy named Jason from London came to us. This guy was successful, millionaire, good public speaker. But he's like, man, I've plateaued. I can see it. I, and I feel that fear is still in there. And I, I, he said, I've been to therapists, I've done mindset, I do meditation, but it's there. And I said, would you like it gone? He said, oh my God, if you could get this gone. Like, so the metaphor I told him is 
when you feel unsafe, it's like you're a hot air balloon and a hot air balloon naturally wants to go up. But if you feel unsafe, it creates this constant weight on you that holds you back. It's like sandbags. Yeah. And so what people do is they work on themselves and they use tools and tips and techniques to kind of push and offset the sandbags. But you're always just pushing to offset the sandbags. And it's better than nothing. You can get the hot air balloon like 20 feet off the ground. But what happens if you stop pushing on the hot air balloon? What happens? It crashes. It crashes because the sandbags are still there. Also, it's exhausting. You're always pushing, pushing, working on your mindset, trying this and trying that. And I said to him, what if we could just clip those sandbags and they were gone? And he said, oh, my God. He said, well, then the hot air balloon just naturally goes up. I said, exactly. You just naturally ascend to a new level. And all that effort that you put into managing the sandbags almost becomes like a jetpack. So he went through our program I think his company was bringing in, it was around 5 million and he had plateaued and he went through our program and just by feeling him feeling safe from within, I don't know his exact numbers, but he said it was 10 X one year later, his whole business was 10 X, but more importantly, he said, I'm enjoying work more. I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm making better choices and I'm happier. I'm enjoying my success more. So if you're an entrepreneur, a business leader, and you're at a, at a high level and you want to get to that next level quickly and more importantly, enjoy it and be a better husband or wife and person, do more of what you love and make smarter choices and it's solved quickly, if that sounds good to you, that's what we're doing. And, and I also want to be clear again. I know this sounds good, but it's the system. Yeah. I can't say this enough. And I want to explain what's not in the system, but why the system works for two reasons. One is it'll make sense why it's so effective. But two, it'll keep your audit, it'll it'll explain to your audience what they need if they want more effective tools when they go out there. So can I share that? Absolutely. All right. So uh, this was a mistake that I made and I believe a lot of the world makes. Okay. Tell me if it sounds familiar. You go to try and make your life better. You can go to either a therapist or a psychologist, maybe a, a, a retreat. You follow a personal development. You go to something and you learn something from either a book and you learn something and you try to practice it, but you don't do it consistently and you stop. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. I can't tell you how many books I read. <laughs> I, I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And I read the book and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the now. And if I'm in the now, I'll be present. <laughs> and it sounds great. And I try it and I was able to be in the now for about, I don't know, 11 seconds. And then I failed. <laughs> and I saw an interview with him, with Oprah. And she interviewed him. She said, Eckhart, this is great being in the now. What a powerful concept. What can people do to actually live in the now? And he said, oh, I, I, I don't know. He, like, he didn't know, he had no system, he had no method, he had no how, he had the what but not the how. So people can't do it consistently. And that's why people fail at what they've been working on. So our modality, our system is engineered and been tested to be, so you will be consistent. And you're consistent for a couple of reasons. First of all, you start off with really simple tools. When you go to a gym, if you wanna lift 200 pounds, you don't start with 200 pounds, you start with like 20 pounds and you do reps you get some strength and some success and then you work your way up. I can't tell you how many tools I learned that I tried it and it was too hard and I would fail and then think I'm a failure. Yeah. So in our program, there's four phases and it starts simple and easy and gets more challenging as you build mastery. But also the steps are dead, super simple. Every day for uh, five times, no, four times a day for five minutes, you do one simple exercise for five minutes and it's very simple. You do it over and over and over again. And it's very simple and easy to do. And because it's simple and easy to do, you will be consistent. We also have an entire consistency support system baked into the system to make sure that you will stay consistent and not only do your exercises daily, but finish the program and get the results. So if you're gonna work with anybody, whether it's us or anybody, look at what people are teaching you and ask, is this something that I can do consistently? If not, you're probably going to fail and think it's your fault. So what we do sets people up for consistency. Do, can you see the value in oh, consistency, Rick? Absolutely. Look, this has been just a phenomenal insight into the work that you're doing. We're pushing an hour and we could talk for hours more. It's just an incredible 
topic that I think um, you've you've cut open the can of worms on this particular topic, but um, I have a couple of more closing questions for you. Um, how do you meet somebody, given that we are all unique and very different, how do you meet somebody where they are right now in terms of how they're seeing themselves, how they're seeing life and, and the way that they believe um, their life to be? And then from that point, um, what is the onboarding? What is the process? to start working with your system? Well, it's a really good question. You know, it's both easy and simple. This fear and anxiety, most people are aware how much it's costing them and how painful it is, especially if you have really bad anxiety and panic attacks. It is so painful. People know they're in pain and they, they reach out to us for help. And they know they're in pain and they know they want help. And we tell them like, this is a solution. You only pay at the end. The reason we can't help them is not because we can't meet them where they're at. I know what it's like to have this. I can, I, I know, I know that pain. The issue is they're not ready to let it go or they're afraid to let it go or they're too skeptical because what they've tried has left them feeling so defeated and hopeless that they've like lost the motivation. So I meet people, but the people we work with, it's not whether, if, whether they want the help or know they need help. It's that are they motivated? Even though ours is dead simple, we work with motivated people because you have to be motivated and honest to actually be ready to let this go. And a lot of people, Rick, they're not ready. They're, they're afraid ready. to let the fear go yep. because they've had it for so long. So motivated people who are ready to be free of this, that's who we work with. Fantastic feedback. Now, again, um, once people uh, have decided that they are motivated, they are ready to move forward and, and shift gears in their lives. Um, where do they actually go and, and, and get involved with your program? Well, thanks for asking. I like things simple. My name's Daniel Packard. So go to danielpackard.com and there you're going to see testimonials of people who have previously had all types of fear and anxiety and had no hope and are now living confident, happy, free, anxiety, panic attack, free lives. I know your audience is skeptical, so do not believe me. Go look at the testimonials, see the joy on these people's faces. Then you can learn the basic structure of our program. You can learn about our no change, no charge guarantee, which basically says, we don't charge you at the beginning. We charge you at the end when you get results so that you understand we care. Results is what matters and your success is our success. So we're with you every step of the way to make sure that you do not fail. We will with, be with you. We will not let you fail because we don't want you to fail because then we fail. So you can read about that. And then if you're motivated, you're really ready to let this go or you're curious, you want to be happier, you want to be free, you want to be a better leader, you're motivated to be free and ha have a happier life, book a call with me if you're ready and motivated. It's a free call, 15-minute call. You can tell me how fear and anxiety is showing up in your life and holding you back. I'll give you some more insights about where it's coming from. I'll show you how we can help you. If you want to work with us and you want our help, great. If not, that's okay too. I'm not here to pressure you. We want you to be motivated because you're the one that has to do it. Yep. And we work with motivated people. So for testimonials, dance video, information, price yep. on the program, frequently yep. asked questions, and to book a call with me, just go to danielpackard.com. Well, there you go, everybody. If uh, you're ready, you're motivated, and it's time for you to make those changes, do your research, find out as much as you can before you make any decisions, make sure that they're in your best interest. Because at the end of the day, like Daniel has said, this is up to you. You need to make the change. You need to make the decision and you have to do the work. But uh, again, if you're looking for that website, it's danielpackard.com. And with all that being said, Daniel, this has been absolutely insightful, wonderful and uplifting call. You're a great guest. Thank you for joining me on the show today. My honor, Rick. Thanks for having me.